Hello Exiles, this is Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming and welcome to another Path of Exile video. In today's video I'm going to show a new build that I'm working on and it's using a couple of uniques, one that's been around for a little bit but I haven't really gotten to use it which is the Iron Mass and uh, the other of which is Wilma's Requital which is a brand new unique which uh, if you didn't know uh, it gives you Ancestral Bond, which basically allows you to use totems on parts of the tree that you normally wouldn't, or, uh, you know, use more totems at least, or different kinds of totems you not, might not be able to use, uh, as well as giving you increases and reductions to cast speed applied to attack speed. Uh, so this is a very interesting helmet. I've wanted to build a build with it. I'm currently on a Pathfinder and I am doing a Poison Ancestral Protector build. Uh, it's kind of scuffed, I just threw it together. I'm using a lot of hand-me-downs, uh, but overall, it's a pretty cheap build. The only things I would consider expensive in this build are like my gloves and shield, which were hand-me-downs from uh, my Frostblades Trickster that I had kind of you know, gotten upgrades for already, uh, but everything else is really cheap. This is just a really scuffed six link that I had lying around left over from like right league start. Um, and yeah, this is, uh, I have an, an amulet with no life on it, just a lot of dot, dot multi basically. Don't have anoints. Uh, my gems aren't leveled up yet. I still have a level 16 ancestral protector. Uh, 14 multi-strike and multiple totems, uh, 18 chance to poison, 18 unbound ailments, and I do have an awakened added chaos damage that I dropped myself uh, while doing wave uh, maven witnessed maps. So I'm just going to do a quick tier 4 atoll and then I'll talk about the build more. Uh, I am going to be doing updates on this build for the next couple of days, so if that's something you're interested in, uh, yeah, go ahead and subscribe if you want. And uh, if you don't, that's okay too. Uh, but yeah, it's a pretty, mostly a pretty fast build. The one issue I do have with it is that uh, basically the totems take a while to arm. Like they literally pop up and have uh, the little bodies come out of them. And that is a little bit obnoxious, but uh, they don't start attacking immediately after placing them. You can see as I place them, the bodies appear like half a second later, uh, which makes it a little slower for mapping than I'd like. Uh, I am using an additional strike that I have on my gloves, um, as well as, um, oop, there you go, as well as uh, melee splash, which I'll show I have on the tree. Uh, so that is what I'm using to help clear relatively quickly. Uh, so the clear isn't that bad, but that delay is really obnoxious. But once they do, you know, get down, you can see their attack speed is very quick. Uh, they're currently attacking uh, 10 times per second, roughly. I think it's like 9.83 or something like that. So just short of 10 second or 10 times per second. Um, yeah, I am currently specced into the abyss stuff here, so. Uh, Getting a lot of stuff spawning out of it and getting a lot of experience from that. I'll go ahead and do the Abyssal Depths, see if we can get ourselves... I need to stop leveling up my Vitality now so I can make sure I have enough mana. Although I don't have to recast my Totems and they don't cost that much mana as of yet. Uh, I do have one minus mana cost on my uh, ring. And yeah, I'm also not fully ascended yet. Uh, I'll be doing that shortly, but I wanted to kind of show the... Uh, I've only been mapping for like maybe a little over an hour at the moment, so I kind of wanted to show it in this state before I kind of get off to the races. Uh, POB says I do with uh, about one, 1 million DPS, so about a quarter million per totem in point. Well... Most of it's poison, like 90% of it is poison. There is some hit damage as well. Going the wrong way. I don't need to be full clearing this. I do want to kill the rares though. A uh, nice thing about the Iron Mass and the reason why I'm using it is it has a chance to apply Wither on hit. Um, and when you're attacking this fast, 
I think it takes on average about 1.7 seconds currently um, with my scuffed low chance I have a 21% chance to apply wither there you go got that um, so it takes about uh, 1.7 seconds to apply full uh, 15 stacks of wither for me which isn't too bad and the wither stacks last two seconds so basically we're up at full wither stacks uh, within that 1.2 seconds or 1.7 seconds and beyond assuming you know they don't phase out and stuff or don't move around too much but I do have a ton of strike range I think my strike range is something like 30 uh, yeah I think it's like 30 because you get a lot of ancestral protector gets a ton of uh, strike range to begin with so it's not too bad uh, I don't have a lot of natural sustain just yet oops sorry about the train yeah I don't have a lot of natural sustain yet uh, I'm getting a vitality which should also help keep my uh, stuff alive and I am going to get more uh, reservation efficiency shortly as well so I hope to be able to fit in I don't currently have uh, either grace or determination I haven't decided which I'm gonna go with yet as far as uh, for defenses uh, but I have neither of them currently uh, and hopefully soon ish I'll have one or the other just go ahead and molten shell yeah I basically just use my flask to sustain life at the moment And it takes a, a second to get the damage. I don't have any uh, poison deals damage faster, um, which would increase my DPS considerably. I could take the mastery for 20%, for instance, uh, but I don't really see the need to. Uh, I can just kind of let it stack up. If it becomes, you know, something that I want to do later on, then I will do that. But uh, at the moment, I don't think it's uh, a necessity. Okay. Didn't get a two sock at one of those. So we'll pop back up here, finish off the map. Um, yeah, wanted to show the clear. Like I said, the clear is not bad, but um, you know, obviously I've played a lot of really good clear builds lately, so it feels kind of bad. I think literally just having the have a, the having the uh guys not have to like pop up and start attacking in order for it to work would be good enough and as you can see i shield charge really 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 unbelievably fast um my movement speed is like 152 and it goes up to 200 if i press withering step uh or just short of 200 and my attack speed is like uh, pretty crazy as well. My attack speed modifier on my totems themselves is 552 uh, with everything up, which everything is always up because I'm Pathfinder. There you go. All right, good enough. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna hold off on the vitality leveling until I get some more reservation or I get uh, the stuff set up for that as far as uh, the mastery to lower the reservation cost, but all right, let's go over the gear. So first of all, um, I have a sanctified relic for this. Pretty much all the builds I'll be doing for the rest of the league are the ones that I have sanctified relics for because, you know, that's fun. Uh, it is chaos damage and chaos damage over time multi. This is a large source. I don't currently have a lot of uh, chaos dot multi yet. So this is doing uh, a lot to carry my damage. Um, it looks like it is a good like maybe 15 percent of my damage or so so really big there like maybe 15 to 18 percent um and then i have the iron mass i got the cheapest one available so it's really bad uh this is 144 uh increased physical damage out of a potential 175 and it only has 16 attack speed out of a potential 18 it goes from 14 to 18 uh, and it also only has 21% chance to, chance to inflict wither. So, um, yeah, this is 
a bad iron mass uh, but the build still feels pretty good if I can get a better one which I will later um, I kind of ran myself out of currency with all the other builds a little bit so I'll have to work some back up on this character which I think will be just fine uh, but yeah this is a very scuffed, scuffed iron uh, mass you could get something along the lines of like a double corrupted one with higher rolls and maybe like attack speed or flat physical or percent physical um, all sorts of fun stuff uh, to really make this go above and beyond uh, especially the attack speed because you know we have multiple sources of more attack speed um, then I have Wilma's Requital socketed with despair and vitality currently uh, my withering steps in here i don't have all of my gem slots filled because i haven't decided what i want to do fully yet uh, but this is a better than average rolled uh, it's got a perfectly average energy shield uh, kind of lowish i mean the flat doesn't matter that much uh, the important thing for me was the accuracy and i did happen and i just dropped this so i guess i didn't really buy it so it was kind of out of my control but um i did get a high accuracy roll on it uh this means we don't have to run precision or take a lot of accuracy especially with the 40 percent here um, i take exactly one accuracy node which is acuity which also gives a lot of attack speed uh, so that is nice and then gain five percent uh, i have the world's worst lethal pride in this spot right now it's literally just there giving us strength uh it gives nothing i guess it gives armor there but uh, fortification physical is extra fire burning damage uh some fire res which i don't even think i need no uh so yeah it's just a really really terrible uh lethal pride that i have in here but yeah anyway uh i digress <laughs> uh this is one of my hand-me-down shields from my uh, frostblades trickster uh, i have a bunch of increased reservation efficiency shields with like various decent stats that i was going to uh double corrupt and never got around to i haven't specced my atlas for uh elva i have like 70 or i have a lot of elva missions built up so i should do that at some point um but uh, yeah, it was three white socket, uh, which I did through um, Betrayal, so I got that set up, and I have Herald of Agni, Haste, and Malevolence in there, which, uh, you know, lowers all of their reservation efficiency, it's very nice. Um, this is an amulet that dropped, that had tier, it dropped identified, uh, I don't remember the circumstances for that, might have been out of a strong box or something, but, uh, it had tier one damage over time multiplier and uh, a bad percent armor roll on it. Um, and I'm like, oh, I don't have a lot of dot multi and I need intelligence. So I just threw a regal on it and then crafted cold and chaos resist. Uh, so I'm at 16% positive chaos res at the moment, which is also helped by uh, like wasting and uh, fatal toxins, which both give chaos resist as well. Uh, so that's kind of you know not great and i don't have an anoint on it uh, i think i'm going to anoint um corruption i looked through at the different things that i could anoint first of all this is like five chaos uh, i think black oils are like two chaos a piece and red oils are like one chaos plus i have red oils but uh, i don't think i have any black oils at the moment so this is super cheap effective withered uh would basically make the withered stacks uh go from like six to about eight i think so i would go from uh 90 percent more damage uh more chaos damage taken applied to the enemies to 120 so that's pretty huge uh so that's kind of the plan for that anointment uh body armor um i have this is important actually so i have uh i needed a way to gain frenzy charges because the way uh wilma's requital works is you will gain for instance uh these nodes have increased attack speed and increased cast speed so you'll get eight percent attack speed from those but if you look at this node which says three percent increased attack and cast speed uh that does not work if they're combined into one line uh, that doesn't work with the one exception for some reason uh, being Onslaught, which has, um, and I think it's because of the commas, Onslaught grants 20% increased attack, comma, cast, comma, and movement speed. So I think that counts as separating them. So Onslaught does apply 
uh, separately for the sake of Wilma's requital, but something like this does not, and that's very important to note. Uh, frenzy charges do grant separately 4% attack speed and 4% cast speed. So each frenzy charge uh, basically is giving me 4% more damage, which is important, but also 8% attack speed, uh, making that very important. Um, the way I maintain it is I took uh, Disciple of Slaughter and just got the Charge Mastery here uh, since I was kind of in the area. Um, what I might do is I might just uh, try to get the higher, like the grand version of it, which is, I think, uh, every 12 seconds. And then I can get uh, Frenzy Charge Duration and Frenetic, and then I can drop that and put something like, uh, you know, Aura Effect or something there. That would be nice, but uh, for the moment, that's how I am getting and sustaining my Frenzy Charges, um, and it's pretty important at this stage of the build. Uh, melee hits have 7% chance to fortify. Uh, believe it or not, one of the very few ways you can give your totems to fortify is through this. Um, if you have melee hits have a chance to fortify, it will give your totems fortify. And because they attack so fast, uh, they're actually fortified reasonably often. Now, obviously, once again, I just uh, used, since this is kind of a weak body armor, uh, that I might upgrade at some point. I just used like the lessers on it and got the 7%, uh, which is fine for now, but I might get uh, higher later just to give more survivability for my totems. Um, I have this ring, which is actually legitimately good. I did pull it off. I forgot I had this. Um, I pulled this off of my uh, immortal juggernaut I was trying to make. Uh, yeah, this has a boatload of life. I can't pretend this is a budget item. It would probably be pretty expensive to get something like this. Uh, but yeah, it's something I put together myself and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's really good. So I have to use that. Um, and then I have this ring, which is a little more scuffed, but more importantly, or most importantly, it has <clears throat> a ton of intelligence. Um, you know, obviously, ideally I wouldn't be using two coral rings, but first of all, my life is pretty low at the moment. Uh, I have a lot of life to pick up like golem's blood, for instance, um okay uh i have some life to pick up i have <laughs> like golem's blood for instance i guess a lot isn't really uh, necessarily accurate but um you know i'll probably get the flat life from mastery as well um and i have a couple of spare points here and there that i can get on top of that um <clears throat> so yeah and then i have this uh same same belt that I was using on my Immortal Juggernaut, uh, just flask effect duration, flask charges gained. Uh, I have barely enough right now to keep my onslaught uh, flask up at full time. Uh, once I get my next ascendancy, which I'm leaning towards Master Alchemist, but uh, POB tells me Nature's rep Reprisal gives me the most uh, for it, so the most DPS. Uh, but this would also help me with like defenses and stuff and help me with elemental ailments. Um, as well as the small node being more useful, this gives 15% chaos damage. Uh, I can get plenty of damage, so that's not really an issue. Uh, but this gives charges gained, and they both give uh, flask effect. So, uh, And this would give me 20% flask effect, which is like 4% uh, more cast in attack speed uh, for a total of 8%. Yeah, oh, there's some dogs outside. Sorry about that. Um, and yeah, just the ailment stuff. At the moment, I have a little bit of ailment avoidance um, and a little bit of stun avoidance, but I'm kind of susceptible. Most of my play style as far as survivability is just kind of sitting back and letting my totems do things. Uh, I would like to shield charge through things, so I do want to get tankier, but yeah, that's the case right now. Um, these gloves... Gloves are life, uh, suppress. These are hand-me-downs from my uh, trickster, so they have uh, maximum frenzy charge and strikes uh, skills target one additional nearby enemy. If I want to switch out my gloves, I can just get this mastery, the attack mastery, um, that gives strike skills target an additional nearby enemy, and it'll be pretty much the same thing. I could go with just melee splash, but I think uh, the coverage you get... Uh, 
you can just drop two totems in a pack and between the extra strike and the and the splash you can usually take them down pretty quick so i think the extra coverage is useful and the uh, maximum frenzies is very useful as well uh so these gloves are quite nice they have a little bit of spell suppress as well um current spell suppress is 43 and that is what i will be working on next with uh, my next few points i'm gonna get uh, inveterate as well as uh entrench so that should pretty much cover me um and finally the boots um these boots are another like hand me down the elusive effect isn't really that useful although uh, i do get elusive from withering step and it does give me chance to avoid damage so i guess and it does give me move speed as well so um you know it's not too bad uh, chaos resist is good then it's like life movement speed spell suppress and resist uh so overall pretty solid um and then i have some mostly kind of low level flasks that i haven't fully i have a level four <laughs> quicks over here uh that i need to replace um my resists are actually not capped without it uh, which I wasn't aware of, so I need to um, kind of work on my resists maybe first. Um, so that might be something I do, you know, pretty soon here. But for the moment, these are this is up all the time, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I'm I'm gonna make sure that I have maxed resists without uh, any help of that. Uh, but yeah, this has attack speed during flask effect, and it's just a sulfur flask. Uh, I probably don't need a sulfur flask at this point. Uh, it gives 40% increased damage. I think I have something like 60 or so. Uh, maybe like 55 or 60 flask effect at the moment. So this is probably giving me 60 uh, something percent damage. So maybe it is worth keeping around. But um, And then it's going to end up giving me like 18 or so percent uh, attack speed. 18-19%. Um, likewise, I have a silver flask, which is giving me my permanent onslaught. Onslaught right now for me with uh, flask effect, which um, onslaught is now a buff, so it scales with flask effect when you get it from your flask. This is very important um, because I get 32% of both attack and cast speed. So onslaught is giving me uh, 62%. And then on top of that, this flask is giving me an additional, uh, probably around 21%. So this flask alone is probably giving me somewhere along the lines of like, uh, 83% attack speed. Uh, which I guess I can kind of look at. It's going to be muddied by the more multipliers a little bit here, but uh, so I get more multiplier from the protector itself, so it goes to 551. Uh, this will be just with multi strike. Actually, I can just take multi strike out. So my raw attack speed here is 262. If I take this off, uh, it goes down to 190. So yeah, I guess I'm getting 72% attack speed. Uh, which is just from this flask alone. So yeah, I guess my math was a little bit off there somewhere, but uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of uh, attack speed to be getting from just one little piece of gear here. Uh, on top of just an insane amount of movement speed, uh, I have 150, goes down to 123 uh, without, and without any of my flasks, this even has move speed, uh, 61 movement speed. So I go from 61 move speed uh, up to 150. So yeah, pretty much 90 move speed just from these three flasks. Um, and then this is just a granite flask. Uh, it's giving me some armor. I don't have much armor. In fact, it's giving me a lot of armor. Um, but I don't have like determination to multiply that. And I don't have a stibnite flask to multiply that. So a little unfortunate there. Um, I haven't even looked, I still have Soul of the Brine King, which I guess uh, I may as well keep for now because I'm not really, I don't have being stunned dealt with, I guess. Um, I haven't, yeah, I haven't really messed around with these. The only thing, uh, I do have is I have uh, Soul of Rith Rislatho, which is actually quite bad. Um, I leveled with Poisonous Concoction and so I had, uh, Soul of Rislatho to help with the sustain of that. Um... But at the moment, I guess I could just put on maybe like Soul of Tukuhama or something. 
Um, yeah, I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe Soul of Gruth cool. Or uh, Abereth. Yeah, if I don't have them anointed, uh, this just doesn't matter at all. Or if I don't have them upgraded. Um, as far as my regular skill tree, um, Pantheon, or uh, sorry, Ascendancy. Uh, first one I took was Nature's Adrenaline, um, which is why I have this Quicksilver Flask. Uh, I just had it crafted already. Um, that way I could just, while I was zooming through the campaign, I'd have the additional movement speed, uh, some additional flask effect and duration, and uh, attack speed uh, since I was using Poisonous Concoction to level. And uh, yeah, with this all going, I had just an insane amount of movement speed throughout. Um, and then I grabbed Nature's Boon, uh, which just helped me sustain my other utility flasks as I added them. Um, and then Master Toxicist, which helps with clear a little bit. Uh, it's not as great as I'd hoped it would be uh, because, well, might be because the damage of the poisons isn't that high or because I didn't take the um, inflict faster. But yeah, it doesn't spread that quickly and... You know, overall, it's mostly here for the poisons you inflict during any flask effect. Have a 20% chance to deal 100% more damage, um, which is basically a 20% more multiplier. So that's really big. Um, and yeah, lastly, I could take Master Sur Surgeon, Master Alchemist, or Nature's Reprisal, I think. Um, even though, you know, looking at it, you wouldn't think you would do... Uh, that much with nature's reprisal once uh once you turn some of the physical into chaos and especially with uh the awakened added chaos the 15 percent more chaos uh damage with attack skills is going to add quite a bit um but yeah i'm kind of leaning towards master alchemist which adds less damage but more it'll give me more uh flexibility defensively so i think that's going to be the way that i lean um as far as the skill tree uh, leveled Poisonous Concoction, came down here, got Primal Spirit, uh, ran through here, um, grabbed Acuity and Swift Venoms, uh, both of which give a very significant amount of attack speed. So I had a lot of attack speed right away, like having this much attack speed this early is, this is 14%, um, and this is... 18% so I was getting 32% attack speed plus uh, this as well so 40% attack speed by like act 2 just from that made poison uh, leveling poisonous concoction very very easy uh, very simple um, but yeah the other highlights for this uh, I have watchtowers with the totem mastery making my totems action speed not be able to be modified below base value uh, that means like chills and temp chains aren't going to, uh, you know, slow down my DPS. Um, and I can't have them frozen, which is very important. I have the whole nature's remedy wheel. I currently need the reduced flash charges used node as well. Um, and the duration. Basically, I need all of these to sustain. And then I have utility flasks gain one charge every three seconds. Um, I also, at the moment, and I'd like to get out of this at some point, am using Druidic Rite, uh, which gives 10% uh, increased flash charges gained and 20% duration. Uh, so that is a temporary thing. And lastly, for flasks, I have Careful uh, Conservationist. Um, and then for poison, I have fatal toxins. I didn't go through the damage multi um, route because I don't have, I need this for 100% uh, poison. Uh, but I'll prob probably pick these up later because I don't have a lot of dot, dot multi. I just have like wasting and then the big node here and then my amulet and uh, sanctified relic. So I don't have a ton of dot multi. I could get a lot more. Um, you know, and this is just 12% more, but when you have so little, that's going to be a lot of, a lot of extra damage. Uh, Blood Drinker, I found out that the uh, recovery on kill does get procced by Ancestral Protector, which is very important to note. Um, then I have like Revenge of the Hunted, Charisma, um, Wasting. I do have Coordination, which is giving me 18% uh, attack speed. Um, Blood Siphon here. I could get these smaller nodes, but I'm not really sure if they're the most efficient thing. I think uh, at the moment the uh, dot multi is going to be way more efficient. Um, and then coming down here, 
I currently have thick skin, which is helping me with my ailment avoidance, which, like I said, is only 40% in com combination with the uh, armor here. It could go up to 45% if I rerolled it, because I only hit 20 out of 25%. Um, but that's something to worry about later. <laughs> uh, it's not one of my priorities at the moment. Um, and then I'll be grabbing in trench at some point. Uh, then over here, um, important Panopticon. Uh, Panopticon gives 50% increased effective buffs of your ancestral totems. Um, so my ancestral totem gives 18% more attack speed. Uh, it goes up to 20%. That will make it so I'm getting 30% more attack speed, which is a more multiplier that also multiplies with multi strike, which is 42% more attack speed. Uh, one thing to note about this interesting thing here. Um, is that the uh, supported skills deal 23% less attack damage. Uh, that means my poisons aren't affected by this, but uh, the repeats just deal more damage uh, regardless of the attack damage part. So I'm actually benefiting, or I'm not uh, suffering from the downside of this at all, and I am benefiting from the upside. Um, obviously, Awakened Multi-Strike would be even much, much better obviously uh, awakened gems usually are uh, but in multi-strike there's a reason why it's pretty much always uh, one of the if not outright the most expensive awakened uh, gem and it's because it is uh, really really good compared to its base form uh, even as far as awakened gems go uh, so yeah and then i have disciple of slaughter with increased charge duration um, which used in combination with my armor means I have infinite frenzy charges. Uh, and lastly, I got tribal fury, which gives me splash damage. Uh, just picked this up. Uh, it was pretty slow clearing before I got this. Um, if you do, if you want to run this and you don't have uh, additional strikes, which can also be gotten through uh, through your eldritch currency as well, you can get an additional strike uh, if you don't want to use an influenced. Uh, but if you, I talked about on my Frostblades Trickster character how to make a plus one frenzy charge, plus one uh, additional strikes, uh, gloves for relatively cheap. Uh, basically, you can buy like two bases for probably around 10 chaos each, uh, one that has one of each of the mods, and then you uh, slam them together with, uh, I don't even think I have one, but it's an Orb of Conflict. Oh no, not Orb of Conflict. Um, oh, it's this one, the one you get from um, Cirrus, uh, but I don't have any currently and I forget what it's called, so. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you just slam them together. Um, the You click on one of them with the orb and then you click on the one that you want to be the base second um and in this case i'd recommend like a hybrid armor evasion one uh very nice to get set up there um and from there you can just craft it um luckily they're both prefixes so you can do like meta crafting to get a good one like i did with this uh so yeah uh, basically making it so prefixes can't be changed and then uh, you know using whatever like veiled chaos method or uh, harvest crafting method you want to do from there um, and then yeah I think that's it I'm gonna get like surveillance I'm gonna get savagery I'm gonna get dirty techniques uh, I'm gonna get fervor uh, I'm gonna get like uh, golem's blood and uh, spell suppress and that's pretty much going to be the whole character um, I might try to fit in cluster jewels later but I don't know if I'll have room and uh, yeah I think this will be fine without them probably um, so hopefully this will end up being a pretty good character I think it has a lot of potential uh, doing some theory crafting even with kind of lower end gear uh, I was looking at like probably 8 to 10 million DPS um, later on with this. Uh, pretty comfy for how cheap and easy to put together it is. Uh, and that is with this Iron Mass. If I got a better one, uh, probably like 10 to 12 million DPS maybe. Uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, definitely want to work on getting better flasks as well. But hope you enjoyed. Uh, this is going to be an interesting character, I think, and I'll update you as I go through. Uh, this has been Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming, and I will see you next time. Bye.